I, I do agree that uh, all three courses, Gova go course, Escalation and De-Escalation, which are open to the Kremlin, have their own pros and cons in terms of, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, unreliable uh, betting, if I, if I was in the Kremlin. I am a betting man, actually, so I, 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 I actually will say that there's not going to be anything big happening. You can, you can all uh, attack me when, uh, when something big does happen next week. I don't think they're going to do anything. First of all, the war's been going on only for 75 days. Two, two and a half months feels a lot like a lot to all of us, including me. I just came back from from uh, uh, Rubezhne sleeping under uh, Russian grad grad bombs, uh, grad bombing, and it, it's horrific. But two and a half months actually not so much if you look at the uh, if you look at the war in Syria, if you look at other long term wars. This war has been going on for eight years. But you know? but but um, Vladimir Putin knows that we're in this kind of transitional phase. He's pivoted <clears throat> towards the yep. east and focusing squarely on that now. Uh, at the same time, he sees those weapons coming in to the Ukrainian side from the West. Soon, a lot of that heavy weaponry will be more available uh, to the Ukrainian side. Is it a race against time for him? It absolutely is a race against time for him. Time is not on his side. He's not able to rearm because of the uh, beca because of all that we've done in the West in terms of sanctions. It's hard to get parts from the West. It's hard to get all sorts of exotic replacement equipment that, that they relied on. Uh, that they, they didn't think that they would have to source in the middle of such a war of attrition. Uh, both the Russians and Ukrainians are duking it out all over the world, quietly buying up everything that they can. There's a secret arms race going on from South America to China, from, from Serbia to Africa. Whatever each side can get its hands on, they're buying up as quickly as possible. And the, the Ukrainians have time on their side because they're fighting a defensive war and they're, uh, they're trading territory for time as any uh, defender who's weaker and has less air, air power and, and artillery power should do, while the Russians are, are losing. With every, with every passing day, they're, they're, they're having less and, and less. And you yeah. heard uh, Aglia Snetkov say that even if yeah. uh, the Kremlin was to uh, decree a ceasefire, it doesn't mean the other side would agree to it. Tell me a little bit more about what you saw on that score when you were uh, near the front line. I saw horrific artillery battles. I saw the Ukrainians reinforcing the line from every side. We were on our way out. We saw three entire battalions just a week ago. Three entire, three entire battalions in, in the way through, through Dnipro, based on the highway they were coming out of. They were probably coming out of the west from Lviv. So the Ukrainians had reformatted, refitted, retrofitted, rearmed, remanned an entire three battalions worth of tanks uh, and artillery. And these guys were these guys were coming in as I was leaving with with some Ukrainian uh, reconnaissance officers, another journalist in a car, and uh, we we saw. I saw a lot of new young men. I saw 70 to 80 percent of the young men that I was speaking to having been mobilized in the last two months. I saw the Ukrainian population, even from Western Ukraine, who wouldn't have fought be, uh, a year ago because they saw the war or something happening in, in Donbass and Donetsk as, as joining up now because Lviv was getting bombed now. I saw an, a Ukrainian army with no manpower issues, but issues with, uh, with uh, getting more ammo and artillery. I saw the Russian army uh, destroying as much as it could with artillery and causing uh, tremendous losses to the big losses, not tremendous losses, to Ukrainians through artillery fire. I did not see yet the, the, the World War II style battles that we were promised. I saw the beginning of an all out assault uh, that, that the Russians had not yet started. The Russians had, had not yet started. And right now, uh, you have the, this situation again with uh, the Russians pounding Mariupol. Yeah. Uh, Mariupol, where that last pocket of resistance is keeping a lot of Russian uh, BTGs. Bat uh, bat battalions yep. mobilized. The minute that falls, how big a problem is it for the rest of that southeastern front on the Ukrainian side? There, there are 12 BTGs, the guys who keep track of the military formations, uh, tied up in Mariupol. The, the Russians so that's don't, roughly what? That's how many? Uh, 12, uh, uh, what, what's a, Somewhere between 700 and 1,200 uh, a, a Russian BTG will be like uh, 800, 850 troops or 1,000 troops, uh, but probably about 10 to, 10 to 14,000 troops, probably. I mean, they're at half strength. Uh, what's a Russian BTG? Uh, uh, I mean, they're smaller, they're smaller than, than Western because they have a lot more artillery and a lot more tanks, but, but fewer complement of troops. Ba basically, they're tying up about 10,000 troops and a lot of... Uh, so if tech, Mariupol... Yeah. Again, that last pocket of resistance falls. Does it change anything? I mean, 
I'm from Odessa. I just came back from Odessa. If you do free up the troops uh, in 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 Mariupol and some of them in Donetsk, you could you could push more troops into Nikolaev, or into the northern axis into onto Slavyansk from Izum. You can you can go into the Dnipro pocket from Izum, or you can go out of Kherson into Nikolaev if you're the Russians. Uh, depending on what they want to do, and they've announced that those are their two uh, objectives, they, they can either push forward into uh, the rest of the Donbass and try to uh, bisect the country and then partition it through taking Dnipro, which will be very difficult, or they can try to lock the Ukrainians out of access to the sea by taking, taking Nikolaev and then eventually my ancestral Odessa and then linking up with Transnistria. But both those things are fairly hard to do, and it would be easier, actually, just to uh, try to take a lot more territory in the Donbass. Uh, it's, it's not going to be easy for them otherwise, uh, other way, either way.